Thank you so much, Mrs. Weaver Watts. Uh, about ready to do what the state has uh, suggested we do not do, and that is try to make a comparison between last year's data, uh, performance data, and previous year's data because of the impact of the pandemic with hybrid schedules and um, fully remote schedules and trying to compare that when you have students who are fully in. Um, but I'm going to do that anyway because most people are want to know, okay, what are the achievement gaps, how, um, how much of an achievement gap. So I'm going to try to show that in, in some of our data. It is a lot of data. Um, certainly I will take questions and, and try to answer them. I'm also going to try to work through the data to, uh, to help kind of tell the story. Um, you've got three areas that are tested in either PSSA or Keystone exams. Uh, they're done in the spring of each year. And the first two levels, elementary and middle, are kind of straightforward. Uh, there's three years of data. It goes back to 2017, 18, 18, 19, and then 2021. Um, why is 18, 19 missing? Well, we didn't t there were no tests that, that was the spring that we were out beginning of the pandemic. Um, so for each of these areas, um, you'll see 2021 on average around 10% lower, uh, whether you're looking at elementary, middle, uh, with the exception of high school, which actually performance at the high school um, in ELA, math, and science was actually pretty consistent. Um, one thing that would tell us is we look at it and try to ask questions why. Um, feel like the high school students were much better prepared for that hybrid model and doing it online than what an elementary student was. And I think we said that at the very beginning that the biggest challenge was going to be with the younger the student. The other question that comes out of that high school data is, oh my gosh, we're at 11% in math, 16%, right? So these are first time test takers at the high school for algebra. So a lot of our kids, as many people already know, are taking algebra seventh grade, eighth grade, and, and so we've got a smaller percentage of our students at that level that are still testing in algebra. So we don't have additional data to add to what's our final numbers for Keystone exams. They're typically at the mid 80s level, um, which again is, is probably top two in the county, top three in the county for high school. And given the numbers are pretty consistent there, um, I would assume that's where we will be or very close to it. Um, the other area of real concern for me was um, elementary science. You look at that and say, whoa, that's 40%. Well, because of the challenge of educating elementary school students, um, focus was really on math and science. We felt very comfortable we'll catch, or excuse me, math and ELA, we felt very comfortable uh, we will get them where they need to be in science once we get them back in school. It's also difficult to do the hands-on experiments and things that we've become uh, accustomed to do when we have kids in person. So we will catch them up and science has always been a real strength of, of ours and our, our teachers. So, um, But obviously an area of concern and one we had to question to figure out why. Um, we have systems in place uh, where we have intervention periods now K through eight and a real academic focus is in those areas K through eight. I also shared that part of our ES ESSR funding is really focused on K-8 and putting supports in place with both um, instructional specialists as coaches for teachers to improve pedagogy in the classroom to differentiate and also address these learn the learning loss that we did experience. Um, as well as putting a multi-system of supports in place where they're getting the supports in class and they're also getting supports in an intervention period. So not to belabor that a whole lot more because we have talked about that. Um, it's something to, to be aware of. Um, we are highly focused on the data this year. Every teacher meeting is focused on the data and it really is how do we address mental health concerns and how do we address the academic piece um, that we know we have. Second piece here is a good, a bit, a, actually a bit of good news because I can actually give you a comparison on this to national state norms. 
So this is an iReady exam in math. It's a benchmark, which just means it's done multiple times throughout the year to measure how the children are growing throughout the year. We do that K through eight. This is actually a snapshot of math, K through eight. Um, and to describe it a little bit, that first column, first four columns there, mid on grade level, means those kids are doing fantastic, mid on grade level already. This was done in September. Um, so you see you got 10% of the kids, 10% of the population's mid or on grade level. We're the green currently in the fall, September. The blue there is the national historic norm of 1819. That means historically across the nation, we're performing what that level is right now, even after the pandemic. We're performing higher, the red is national the fall of this year, we're, we're performing higher than the average nationwide, and we're also performing higher than the statewide, which is number is the 6% in yellow there. And really you see that kind of build across. So early on grade level, which is where you would expect, again, it's amazing, we're almost identical to what the national norm is on a nor in a normal year. Um, that's not what we expect. Typically, we'd want to be higher than that, but it's kind of impressive given what we went through in the past year and a half. So kudos to teachers and administrators who have really focused on it. The middle one is one grade, below, one grade level below. Again, pretty consistent with the national norm. We're actually a little bit higher there but we're also lower when we start getting to the two and three grade levels behind, which are truly areas of concern there. These are students that should be getting intervention period and, and skill-based instruction in addition to what's happening in the regular classroom. So um, that's actually a bit of good news and it's actually apples to apples because it's those peers to their peers across the state and nation. Um, but work to be done, there's no doubt about that, either way. And ELA, real quick, it looks fairly similar, um, where we're actually higher in ELA. Um, math nationwide, bigger challenge through the pandemic than ELA, um, without a doubt. So, graduating class, um, important numbers, that top might be broken down a little bit too much with math and, and writing, reading and writing going on. But the total number, class of 2021, you have Susquehanna, uh, Pennsylvania National, and then you have, again, 2020. Um, so it went down 10 points, not significant, um, but still not bad, consider all things considering. And, and one of the reasons they don't go down greatly is because, again, these tests are a body of work across the, the student's whole career. It's not just a course area. So where it was impacted, and probably to be expected, real quick, ACT, very similar. Our scores didn't fluctuate a whole lot last year with the ACTs. Um, we had far less kids test in these areas to be expected again in, in COVID. Um, here's which one is um, is impacted, <coughs> and it's AP placement exams. So if you ask any teacher what's the biggest challenge in AP, they're going to tell you time. We don't have enough time to cover the content that a college course has asked us to do. So here is evidence of that. We went to a hybrid schedule under the circumstances for safety, and that cut down even more time significantly what they had in class. So you see that drop from 68% typically in, in 2020 down to 47%. We have averaged for the past six years or so right around 70% of the students taking exams or scoring three or higher. Um, impressive because we're not a large district. Those are big numbers and we're talking 300, 320, 330. Mm -hmm. Last year we had 255 again under the circumstances. One thing to add with the um, AP exams, with the hybrid schedule, all of the actual exams were at the end of the year in the spring, and a lot of our AP classes ended um, during the winter, so a lot of the students had half a year to forget yeah. uh, a, a lot of the point, context, so that's also why they switched to the block, the block schedule, so good point. So, so, very, very telling figures. 
Yeah, they're yeah. they're telling figures, and and I want them to be transparent because I think you know we're not hiding anything. This, but there's there is reasoning behind them. Right. Uh, but what it's helping us do, particularly iReady, where they had all those bars and it's a little hard to read, that's the data that's meaningful to us because we can measure the growth as this year goes on. We're not waiting until the standardized test at the end of the year, a one-time assessment. It's, it's doing it over the course of the year and making modifications to instruction along the way. Um, and you know, that's tough for a good district that's used to having success diving into that because this is a game changer now. Sure. We're working our butts off trying to say, what can we do over the next two weeks, three weeks, four weeks to address those, those academic gaps? And I think I had a conversation in form with Bruce. We talked about, Bruce at one point said, well, this took a year, it should only take a year to, to recover. That's not gonna be the case. This is a two, three year process to, to address all the needs of all students. Um, but uh, that's what we're here to do. So we're, we take, we'll continue to do that. I think that's all for my, my data. Um, one other tidbit we often share is just uh, how many kids going on to post-secondary. Love that. We're no longer saying four-year, two-year, whatever. 76% yeah. are going on to higher ed, and 22% went into the workforce, 2% armed forces. Those are the kids that moved on. Um, that's all for my. You know what the I ready scores too. Not only uh, the children did a good job, and thanks to the students for their at home work, but also to the parents. Absolutely. You know, that Absolutely. the parents, the parents showed up, and that is reflective in those numbers. The, the, the other challenge with the number that that the PSSAs, Keystones, almost everybody took them anyway because it's a graduation fire. Well, PSSAs, um, typically we have close to 100% because we like to use the data to say, all right, where are our kids? Um, we typically get about 100%. We might have been at, I don't know, 65, 70% test rate. That impacts what you're getting. Like, so to, to compare last year's numbers to this year's numbers is difficult to do that as well right. because the number of kids tested is nowhere, it's not similar. Um, so it's tough. but. That iReady data, we have CDT. We're doing like three, four different benchmarking depending what grade level. Um, it's been powerful data here mm -hmm. in the fall. And we'll do it again coming up end of this month, going into December. We'll do it again in, in March. So we're not waiting until the end to figure out, whoa, you know. Good job. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Dr. Bryson. This You're welcome. This is absolutely wonderful. And it's really inspiring to know that we're going to get those updates throughout. So thank you so much.